Hello, this is the audio version of Park Run Magazine. Thanks so much for listening. Each episode of the audio magazine will share hints and tips about getting started on a more active lifestyle, as well as stories about the people and communities around Park Run events. Hello. This is episode three of series two of the audio version of Parkrun magazine, featuring a selection of the stories from the second edition of the printed magazine. Coming up in this episode, we talk about type 2 diabetes and how making relatively small changes to lifestyle can massively decrease the risks associated with type 2 diabetes and in some cases even reverse it. But our big focus in this episode is walking at Parkrun. From events where walking is super popular to taking the first steps to walking at Parkrun, we've got it covered. If you know someone who's thinking about walking at Parkrun, tell them about this episode and maybe suggest they have a listen. Let's begin with that diabetes story. More than 4.9 million people in the UK are believed to be living with diabetes. 90% of those have type 2 diabetes, which can have serious health consequences. However, small lifestyle changes can put type 2 diabetes into remission. In the second issue of the printed Parkrun magazine, journalist Minri Kaur talked to people who have gently made changes in their lives and discovered that those changes have had a huge impact on their health. Her words are voiced by an actor. An estimated 13.9 million people in the UK are at increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, a condition that can result in tiredness and excessive thirst, but may also cause serious problems with the heart, eyes or nerves. Insulin made by the pancreas assists digestion and helps the body to use glucose for energy. But type 2 diabetes means that insulin doesn't work properly or the pancreas can't make enough. This leads to high blood sugar levels. Your risk of developing type 2 diabetes is influenced by factors including age, sex, ethnicity and weight. If you're white, your risk increases as you reach the age of 40. However, If you have a South Asian heritage, your risk increases from the age of 25. One theory that may explain this is that people from South Asian backgrounds are more likely to store fat around their middles, close to organs such as the liver and pancreas. This may be a result of adaptation to climate or related to traditionally vegetarian, high-carbohydrate diets. Dr. Roshane Mahodin, South London GP and Pathways and Behaviour Change Manager at Vitality, explains why diabetes is more common in ethnic minority groups. South Asian, Black African and African Caribbean groups have a high prevalence of type 2 diabetes in the UK, he says. People from a South Asian background have a two to three times higher risk of developing diabetes. There are a number of things that can be done to prevent diabetes in this group and the advice is consistent with people of other ethnicities in terms of keeping physically active and eating a healthy diet. Making relatively small changes to diet and activity can eradicate the need for diabetes medication, as Anita Chaman, aged 58, from Uxbridge discovered. She was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in March 2022 after going for a blood test. I was shocked, she says, as I am quite active. As well as being mindful about food choices, Anita also started going to parkrun and this encouraged her to be active during the week too. These small changes have enabled her to put her diabetes into remission. She now feels happier and healthier and no longer requires medication. Signs of type 2 diabetes include excessive thirst and tiredness, but not every case is symptomatic. Jagir Kaur was 59 when she was diagnosed although she had no symptoms. She started to walk every day and also thought more carefully about healthier food options. Now, aged 80, Jagir takes diabetes medication but feels she has the condition under control. Going to the gym, walking and staying active has helped me to control my diabetes, she says. Portion size as well as the kind of food you eat could be influential. Rana Mianee, aged 61 from Hounslow, was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in July 2019. 
I had always prided myself on eating relatively healthy food, he says, but I just had big portions. Rana had been a park runner since 2017, mostly in volunteer roles. He went for regular blood tests to measure lipids and accumulated blood sugar, which had been relatively stable. However, in 2019, his GP told him he would have to take diabetes medication. Rana began walking several times a week and integrated parkrun into his exercise routine. Two years later, he had put his diabetes into remission and no longer needs medication. Karen Davies, Senior Clinical Advisor at Diabetes UK, says, There are many health benefits of keeping active if you're living with type 2 diabetes. Exercise can help the body use insulin better by increasing insulin sensitivity, reducing blood pressure and helping you to lose weight. I have been diabetic for 28 years, says Gobind Singh Rai, aged 50, from Wolverhampton. In 2017, the doctors advised I was beyond their help. This was a wake-up call as my kids were young and it felt like I wouldn't see them grow up. Gobin didn't feel confident playing sport, but was able to build up walking and jogging at a pace that felt comfortable and went to his first park run in 2017. He has now taken part in 120 events. The key was to start simple, he explains. So walk to the shops to buy milk rather than take the car. Gobind now runs three or four times a week and has joined a running club. And he doesn't take diabetes medication anymore. Running is a critical part of who I am today, he says. It's literally saved my life. Another symptom of type 2 diabetes is that injuries are slower to heal. Mark Yarnell, aged 50 from Ealing, was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at the end of last year. My diet was fairly regular, he says. Mostly meat, vegetables, fruit, bread, pasta and rice. I probably drank a little too much alcohol and didn't do a lot of exercise. I thought my job, he owns a brewery, was active enough. Mark started jogging in September 2021, having not run since he was about 15. But he injured his knee, which put him out of action, and it healed very slowly, prompting a visit to the doctor. A blood test confirmed diabetes. However, Mark was determined to get his health under control. I started running again in February in 2022 using a Couch to 5K program to avoid injury through overenthusiasm, he says. I noticed the change and have managed to reverse my diabetes and my plasma glucose is under control. 15 years ago, Jagdeep Singh Sahota was prescribed tablets for type 2 diabetes. However, during the past two years, he has stopped taking them. Exercise and diet have put his diabetes into remission. I gave up drinking and have been training in the gym, says the 45-year-old, as well as going for a walk every day. A blood test revealed a type 2 diagnosis for 32-year-old Ilana Eastrick in 2022. She was advised to have a second test after a few weeks to confirm. During that time, I started watching my food intake and doing short workouts, she remembers and my blood sugar had gone down one point into the upper limit of pre-diabetes. A subsequent test was normal. The short workouts gently evolved. My housemate and I decided to start Couch to 5K together, Ilana says. I remember each week thinking that the next run would be impossible. Ilana took the programme at her own pace, only moving on when she felt comfortable. I have now managed to reverse my diabetes, she says. Making lifestyle changes may seem like a big deal, but if you start in a way that doesn't feel intimidating, healthy habits can soon form. Manjit Singh, age 61, from Southall, was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in 2018. I started walking and jogging and doing at least a minimum of 10,000 steps a day, she says. I have managed to reverse type 2 diabetes within nine months and also went to park run six months ago. Park runs motivate and encourage me and have helped me to control diabetes. For 75-year-old Joy Yates from Sheffield, a combination of exercise and diet changed her life. But rather than making a drastic change straight away, she started with small adjustments. Joy was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes 20 years ago and decreased her carbohydrate and sugar intake. 
I lost weight and managed to reverse the diabetes through cycling and the gym, she says. She also walked and did chair exercises, leg raises, side splits, knees up and leg swings. I no longer require insulin, she explains, and my arthritis in my ankles and knees has gone. I feel healthier, look better and have more confidence. Vitality is Parkrun's headline partner. Vitality understands that getting started towards moving more or making healthier choices is sometimes hard. So they encourage members to take small steps and reward them for making changes. Those small steps can add up to a big impact over time. By becoming more active, you can reduce your risk of a life-altering diagnosis such as type 2 diabetes, which impacts millions of people across the UK. Common symptoms include excessive thirst and hunger, blurry vision and fatigue. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms, you should contact your GP. Helping you to stay in good physical and mental health is at the core of Vitality's business. To access more support on starting your well-being journey and to find out more about Vitality's plans and programmes, visit vitality.co.uk. To find a Parkrun event near you, visit parkrun.org.uk forward slash events. Now, let's spend a few minutes talking about walking at Parkrun. It's a fantastic way to get outside and feel great, meet new people and hear their stories and to become healthier and happier. In the second edition of the printed magazine, we made a special mini-magazine all about walking at Parkrun. We've collected some of the best bits for you here. You don't have to run to take part in Parkrun. Parkrun isn't all about running. There's no time limit and no pressure to move at a pace that makes you feel uncomfortable. Parkruns are inclusive welcoming community events, and ideal for walking. If you are not sure you can manage to walk 5k, you don't have to. Oh, and you can never come last. Maybe you had liked to walk with friends, or use a walk around parkrun as a way of getting outdoors every week. Walking might be the way you travel to get to your parkrun volunteer role, or you could be wearing the tailwalker's high-vis jacket. Around 10% of parkrunners going through the finish funnel at Thurso Parkrun in Scotland walk the course. Let's find out more. If you're a walker, you're actually more likely to do some wildlife spotting, explains event director Donna Stewart. It's a scenic route. We have otters on the river and there's a heron as well. From the very beginning, Thurso has encouraged walkers through social media posts and word of mouth in the community. People ask... Is it really for walkers? I'll be the last person, says Donna. We always make it clear, you're never last because there's the tail walker. The tail walker is our most popular volunteer position. Walking is embraced among all ages at Thurso. We have families that come and walk together, says Donna. It's a great way to start your Saturday. By whatever time you finish your walk, you've probably got almost 13,000 steps. Donna encourages anyone who isn't sure about whether they could walk at Thurso to come along and marshal. It gives people confidence by observing what's going on, she says. Thurso is a three-loop course, which is ideal for anyone daunted by walking the whole 5k. Come and be at the start with everybody, she says. And if after a loop you feel like you've had enough, that's okay. Now let's go to Northern Ireland and find out about a Saturday park run that's also really popular with walkers. Colin Glen is a forest park in West Belfast. A hidden gem for those who haven't found it yet, says event director Cloda Claxton. According to park run statistics, around 13% of finishers walk the park run course each week, although Cloda reckons it's actually more like 20%. We welcome walkers, runners or those that want to complement one with the other, says Cloda. The most important thing is to enjoy it and look forward to being a part of the Colin Glen Parkrun family. The course includes flat riverside sections, lake views and, it's fair to say, a few challenging hills. But Colin Glen Parkrunners take it all in their stride. At the end of the day, says Cloda, 
A mile is a mile, whether you walk, run or crawl. You are still covering the same distance, and this is to be applauded. Colin Glen prides itself on being a community-focused event, and Cloda says that participants are always looking out for each other. We have a lovely range of people that come along and regularly meet up with parkrun friends and walk the route, she says. It's an opportunity for them to catch up, clear the head and start the day off with a 5k walk under their belt. There are loads of benefits to walking at Parkrun. Here are five ways you can make the most of it. Tip 1. Catch up with friends. Spending an hour walking and talking together can be an uplifting start to the weekend. Tip 2. Or you could enjoy some me time. Switch off from the outside world. Maybe listen to a podcast or your favourite album. Tip 3. Walking at Parkrun is a way of spending some free, quality time with the family. Try activities together like I Spy around the course. Tip 4. You could help someone else. Do you know someone taking their first steps to completing a 5K? Encourage them to walk with you. Tip 5. Finally, walking at Parkrun is a brilliant way to see your local area in a new light. Slow down and enjoy the morning, taking in the views. Perhaps you've been thinking about walking at your first parkrun, but you're not sure what a parkrun is actually like. A really good way to find out is to come along and watch. Maybe have a chat with a marshal, or just see what happens during the run director's welcome briefing. Here are a few more tips about taking those first steps to walking at parkrun. Saturday Park Run is 5k, but you don't have to walk the whole distance. Walk as much as feels comfortable. Park Run is a place where everyone can walk, jog or run at their own pace. If you feel like having a practice walk before you go to Park Run, dress for the weather. If it's safe to wear headphones where you're walking, perhaps download a podcast, an audio magazine like this or a favourite playlist. If you've never planned a walk before, make it part of your ordinary daily life. Can you walk to the supermarket instead of using the car for a small shop rather than trying to lug a whole load of groceries home? Even just moving your body for a minute can benefit your health and well-being. Although it might be daunting to try something new, remember that everyone was a beginner once. Lots of people who have yet to try parkrun for the first time worry that they will come last, that they won't be able to keep up or will end up alone. This won't happen at parkrun. To explain more, we'll tell the tale of the tailwalker. Every parkrun event in the UK has a tailwalker, a volunteer or group of people who walk around the course making sure that nobody gets left behind. Tailwalkers are there to make sure everyone is accounted for and that all parkrunners who want to complete the whole course can do so safely, with no pressure. The spirit of inclusivity has been part of parkrun since its very first event, the original Bushy Park time trial in 2004. There were only 13 finishers that day, but the final finisher got a prize. Celebrating every participant remains one of Parkrun's key tenets. There is no cut-off time and everyone is welcome. When we first introduced the distinctive orange high whiz whiz, they were worn by tail runners. Back in 2017 though, Parkrun realized that using the name tail runner created a barrier to anyone who felt they might not be able to run the whole of a Saturday 5K event. Besides, an increasing number of those tail runners were enjoying a walk rather than a run. So in June that year, the tailwalker as we know it today was born. Tailwalkers are a vital part of parkrun. Not only is the role compulsory, but the reassuring presence of the tailwalker is a visible sign that parkrun is a place for everyone. During October 2022, parkrun launched the Park Walk program. Not only does Park Walk celebrate walking at Parkrun, but it also introduced a new volunteer role, the Park Walker, in their blue high-vis. Park Walkers walk alongside other walkers, chatting or taking in the scenery together. 
Basically, just making sure that every walker feels welcome and included and hopefully encouraging them to come back the next week. Walking at Parkrun is a brilliant way to get started on your Parkrun journey or to make space for yourself on a weekend morning. Hopefully, all those stories we've shared will inspire you or someone you know to begin walking at Parkrun. And now, to round off this episode, let's hear one more story from a real Parkrunner who wrote into the second issue of the printed magazine. Charlene Carden told us about a fantastic morning at Barclay Parkrun in Hertfordshire. She told us, My husband Ash introduced me to Parkrun when we ran as a couple at Malden Prom. We love trying different parkruns as a family. At Barclay Parkrun before our wedding, which was also my 100th event, the team got us a wedding card, which was lovely. Our wedding guests even sang a revised version of the Blur song Park Life rewriting the lyrics to reflect our love of Parkrun. Another inspirational story there. If you've got a Parkrun story to share, you can get in touch at parkrun.com forward slash feedback. You never know, your story might end up as a blog post on the Parkrun website or in print in a future edition of the mag or here in this audio magazine. And if you've been thinking about getting more active and walking at Parkrun, we hope all the tips and stories we shared in this episode have given you a boost to go to Parkrun next Saturday or take the children on Sunday. Join us again for episode four, where we'll be finding out about a support group with a difference, talking to a Parkrun ambassador and exploring events in the northeast and the southwest of England. Thank you for listening to Parkrun Magazine. We hope you liked the features and enjoyed our simple ways to take steps towards a happier and healthier life. To find out more about your local Parkrun event or collect a free copy of the printed magazine, head over to magazine.parkrun.com. Parkrun Magazine is created by Parkrun with the audio version made possible through editing and audio adaptation by Imogen Lees and production by Light the Wind Media and Runcom. If you enjoyed listening, please remember to subscribe, leave a review, or share it with others. That's all for this episode. We hope you enjoy the next one.